Okay, analysis. Uh, electrolytic process. The analysis of electrolytic process is based upon Faraday's law. Okay, based upon Faraday's Faraday's law. Well, Faraday's law comes from the topic of electricity and magnetism in which a measure of current flow is the amp ampere. And keeping in mind that we're talking about chemical electricity, so concepts in electricity are applied to the chemical charge flow in the process. So current flow is called an amp, for short, an ampere. And it's the amount of charge passing a point per unit time. So amp is equal to charge over a time element. Now, in electricity and magnetism, a unit of charge is the coulomb. And it's how many coulombs per unit of time. And a coulomb represents a certain charge on is specifically Find it again. 1.6021 times 10 to the minus 19th of Coulomb. Okay, so what? Okay. So when we apply the idea of amperage to the concept, what the typically is how many Coulombs equal one mole of uh, electrons. How many coulombs, capital C, equal one mole of electrons? Why am I interested in that? It's, a char it's an amount of charge and how many amps. You can set up a charge flow with so many amps, 10 amps, 20 amps. So you have a generator that you can adjust. So it's a variable that you can adjust in terms of how much electricity you're sending through a solution to generate precipitation of or uh, reduction of a certain metal. So the idea of sodium, say, uh, let's do chrome. Chrome is a uh, Cr plus three. Well, what does this mean? It means that you need three moles of electrons to reduce that to the basic standard state. So you want to relate moles of electrons to whatever amperage idea, uh, how many amps will deliver a mole of electrons, okay? So if this is the coulombs per electron and a mole of electrons is one out of guy throws number, then the charge on one mole of uh, electrons is 1.6021 times 10 to the minus 19th coulomb per electron times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd electrons. And that turns out to be uh, 96,500 coulombs. And we equate that to one mole of electrons. Now, coulombs up here is expressed in terms of the time element and the amps. In other words, a coulomb, if you saw this for coulombs, it would be amp times a time. Well, time is usually in seconds. So the coulomb, 96,500 coulombs, is 96,500 amp seconds. Now, this all boils down to one set of conversion factors, as I'm about to show you. Now, you don't have to remember how all this, I, I'm obligated to show you where stuff comes from. 
But when you work problems, what you need to understand here is that one Faraday, capital F, is equal to the charge needed for uh, one mole of electrons. Well, we just derived that. Well, one Faraday is 96,500 coulombs, which is 96,500 amp seconds, which is one mole of electrons. This is what is the practical end of Faraday's law. And so you don't have to remember all the other stuff. I'd like for you to, and you know, you become smarter. But this is what you will need. And by the time we finish working some problems now, hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. So we're going to use this in a dimensional analysis sequence to determine the mass of a, of a metal. Uh, how much metal will be deposited as a function of time and current? Or how long would it take to deposit such a given amount using a certain amperage? So those are two types of problems that you're going to face on exam day. Uh, so let's start out with how much um, chrome CR metal solid can be deposited using a current of 50 amps for two and a half days. I'm just making it up. Two and a half days. Okay. Now, when you approach one of these kinds of problems, is you think in terms of the scientific method. Okay. What's the first step in the scientific method? Identify the problem. Well, what they're looking for is how much in terms of grams. Let's put it in grams. Okay. So, in, in the start of one of these problems, start out by going the scientific method. What's the problem? Okay. How many grams of chrome? Uh, solid can be deposited. I forgot one thing. Deposited and from, put it in here, chrome sulfate. Say like that. Chrome 3 sulfate. And I kind of see what I did up there. I added the salt we need. So uh, let me also put that, I'll bring that down here now and bring that chrome to chrome 3 sulfate in water will ionize to two chromes plus three plus three sulfates which you don't which will not enter into the electrolysis but this is what we're interested in plating out so you'll have this salt in water aqueous phase uh, and then you'll hook up the uh, bumper that you're trying to chrome plate, if you will, to uh, as the uh, reduction side or the cathode in your electrolysis process. So you just hook all the wires up to that and then hook, say, to iron or something that'll undergo oxidation uh, easier than the chrome and it prefers to go reduction. All right, now, the problem is how many grams of the chrome metal can we deposit out of this? Now, look into the problem and you'll find some data, okay? I like to start with current, and you find it easier because it's directly related to the Faraday's up here. And the Faraday current in seconds will lead you to moles of electrons in which you will apply to uh, precipitation or reduction of the chrome. So I'm going to set this as a question, and so the data that you've collected, or the part two of the scientific method, is uh, 50 amps. Now from here you want to convert the amps to grams of chrome. Okay, so the thing up here is that you want to get rid of amps and so uh, we want 96,500 amp seconds is the unit, is the uh, equivalent that we will get rid of the amp second. Now, even though it has seconds out there on the end, 
you're going to come up with a mass per second times whatever many days in seconds. And you'll figure out from there uh, how much will be deposited. Now, when you start with amps, amps use this, if you use this term, it is one mole of electrons. Electrons right here. Okay. All right, so the, now the amps are no longer. Now, once you get to moles of electrons, and as I indicated earlier, we start looking at the problem from a question standpoint and then select some information in the problem to equate to. And in this case, I chose 50 amps. Why? Because I have a conversion factor up here that relates moles of electrons uh, to... Uh, 96,500 amps seconds, which is, of course, one Faraday. Now that we've gotten rid of amps, we have this process. 50 amps will give us so many moles per second. So, you, you know, it's a mass factor now. But we're not interested in how much moles of electrons. Well, we need it, but how many moles of electrons do we need to precipitate or reduce one mole of chrome in here? Well, chrome is plus three. So we have a chrome three, meaning that we'll need three moles of electrons. So I'll come down here with three moles electrons for one mole of chrome metal, like that. Then we want to go to the periodic table and we want to move from moles, moles per second now, that's what we have, uh, to a mass factor. So we know that moles of chrome, one mole of chrome metal from the periodic table is 52 grams. So we have it, uh, CR. We have so many uh, grams per second now in our equation. So, uh, moles of chrome, moles of chrome are gone, so how much in two and a half days? Well, what I like to do is stop right here and calculate my uh, uh, grams per second and then times however many seconds in the time frame. And so what we'd have is 50 right here times 52 here divided by 96,500 and there in times three. And that's grams per second. Uh, now since this is a large frame of time, how do you choose your significant figures. Well, the significant figures are typically uh, based on a data, fra a data uh, fraction that's not, or factor, data factor, that's not a constant. You're not supposed to use conversion factor data to define uh, significant figures. They essentially, we have two and a half days as a variable and 50 amps. Okay, the one with the least number of significant figures is supposed to be the uh, one you choose. And so 505 would be a single uh, significant figure. And so this would round to 2,000 grams, which would be the appropriate answer based upon one significant figure and the data collection. Okay, uh, I thought I had it on. How long will it take to deposit, I don't know, uh, 1,000 pounds of gold, uh, silver from silver nitrate aqueous solution, assuming you got plenty of solution, okay? Uh, silver, 1,000 pounds of silver from silver nitrate using a current of 75 amps.
Okay, so you're trying to figure out how long it's going to take you, and of course you working from the silver nitrate. Well, silver nitrate uh, in aqueous solution will ionize to silver ions, aqueous plus nitrate ions, aqueous, and of course the silver will require one mole of electrons to form the reduced form of silver. We were trying to deposit or or form that uh, metal, reduced form of the metal. So we start out with asking ourselves, well, what are we looking for? How long? Well, you can do it in days, weeks, seconds, years, whatever. Let's start out with seconds, because once we get to seconds, then you can adjust seconds to hours, days, or whatever you need. Uh, when we by simple conversions. <coughs> So again, uh, we could use 1,000 pounds or 75 amps. Well, I'm going to go with uh, 75 amps because I just like that because it immediately takes me to uh, amp seconds. So that's 96,500 amp seconds, and that's one mole of electrons, okay? So now that we've gotten rid of the amps in the turn in the units, uh, we're now at moles per second. We want to go to how much silver? Well, uh, it takes one mole electrons for one mole of silver. Reduced form, like that. So now moles of, of electrons are gone. So we have now moles of silver per second in the calculation. So now we want to get one mole of silver second and so one mole of silver weighs 107, 108 grams. 108 grams. Okay, so there goes the moles of silver and then we get grams of silver. And so there are 454 grams of silver make one pound. Make that a little prettier. Uh, silver solid like that. Now, in this issue, you want to convert the uh, pounds. Uh, how long? Okay, we're per second right now. So we're at pounds per second. Now, uh, I need to get rid of the pounds and, uh, okay. So this would be 75 times 108 times one pound. So we know what that's going to give us. Nominator will be 96. 500 uh, and 454 and this calculation will be pounds per second and so what we'll, we'll do is uh, divide this number into the thousand pounds so we have pounds over second divided into pounds and this will give us the seconds to generate that much uh, silver so the seconds to reduce, clean that up a little bit, 1,000 pounds of silver is equal to 1,000 pounds divided by 1.849 times 10 to the minus 4 pounds per second, like that. So I have 1,000 divided by 1.849 times 10 to the minus 4, and so that's 5.4 times 10 to the 6 seconds. I don't know, I just made up the units. I mean, the problem from that. 
Okay, so if you want to convert to hours, there's 30, uh, 3,600 seconds per hour. One hour is 3,600 seconds. And so I'm going to divide that number by 3,600. And I get uh, 15, I mean hours, takes me 1,502 hours to generate that. And I think you can easily convert that into days divided by 24 hours per day. And so that takes about 6.3 days. And if we use the 1,000 as the least number of sig figs, so we'll round this to about six days to reduce a thousand pounds of uh, silver. I don't know what the going rate of silver is per ounce, but that'd be a nice return on investment if you could get a thousand pounds of silver in six days. <laughs> Very quickly, okay?